Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, we have got some exciting movement on constitutional carry across this great nation. I'm going to be really honest with you. We have some incredible news, which is on this side, and we have some a little concerning. I'm not quite, quite sure what to think about it coming from the other side. I've got some good stuff from Georgia, some crazy stuff from Nebraska. I'm going to fill you guys all in on everything. It's linked in the description box below, so you guys are in the know. I'm going to do a quick read from the sponsor of this video, and then I'm going to show you everything that's going on because some amazing things to celebrate and also some things I'm very concerned about. All right, let's get it. Now, our sponsor, Armed American Supply, is a small, family-run business owned by a retired law enforcement officer and his wife. They design, print, and ship everything in-house from their shop in southern New Jersey. This week, they are running a buy two and get one free sale. If you are the type who loves quality Second Amendment and blue-collar apparel, this is your chance to grab three for two in the description box below. And thank you so much to Armed American Supply for making this possible. But I'm a positive kind of guy. I love looking at the positive. I love diving into our rights and how we're going to pass them along to the next generation. So I'm going to hit the positive first in my home state of Georgia. So there has been some very serious movement on the constitutional carry front in my state. All right. Georgia. House passes Senate's constitutional carry bill. So the House passed the Senate's version. It now goes back to the Senate for confirmation and then goes to Kemp for signature. And I will keep you updated on that. Make sure you're subscribed with that bell on so you'll be the first to know when that drops because that is going to be 50% of our states. 50%. That's incredible. Today, the House voted 100 to 67 to pass Senate Bill 319, the Senate's constitutional carry bill with substitute language previously added in the House Judiciary Committee. Like I said, we'll go back to the Senate for immediate consideration. I expect tomorrow. We'll see. Like I said, stay tuned. Currently, there are 24 states that already have constitutional carry. Of those, Alabama, Ohio, and Indiana joined that list just this year. Governor Brian Kemp has stated his support for constitutional carry, so the General Assembly just has to send the bill to his desk. That's a very succinct way of saying where we're at. So Georgia is literally right there on the cusp, which will put us at 50% of states before mid-year. Incredible. Now, I'm going to talk to you about Nebraska because this is the sour part of the, this Sour Patch Kid because I'm a little concerned. Let me walk you through where they're at because they're the last one to make progress on this. Now, here's my little disclaimer. I'm not from Nebraska. I've not spoken to anyone in the Nebraska legislature. They do things a little bit differently there. I'm going to lay this out. You guys let me know what you think in the comments field below because I'm seeing some things that are concerning for me. But like I said, I'm going to report it. Everything is linked in the description box as a source. You tell me what you guys think. All right. So here's where they're at right now. They've got one more day this week of legislative session, and then they end on April 20th. Okay, so they have effectively eight more days after tomorrow. Okay, that I'm a little concerned about. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. Right here is where in the process this bill is. It's under what's called select file. That's the final vote. Now, that's fine and dandy, but the big problem here is that could be staying there forever or it could move forward. But there's something that's occurring I'm going to show you right now that is holding it up a little bit. So as you can see, there hasn't been any movement on this bill since March 15th. Now over on the right side, now this is the bill itself, LB773. On the right side, you see proposed amendments. You see that one that says Brewer AM2106? That's a very concerning amendment. In fact, that's the one that's causing the Republicans to abandon this bill, that, that kind of rumor mill that's been going on. Check this out, because this is the part where I get really concerned. This is right at the finish line. But Brewer is the guy who initiated and introduced this bill, the constitutional carry bill in Nebraska. This does not make sense. So here's the here's the amendment itself. Like I said, top left of the screen, AM2106. This is an amendment to LB773. I'm going to zoom in on this second part, and this is a little concerning. This feels like a poison pill in this bill. Check it out. To require registration of handguns other than those owned, possessed, or transported by an individual holding a valid permit under the Concealed Handgun Permit Act or a license or permit to carry a concealed handgun issued by another state or the District of Columbia. Okay, the problem that I have there, you basically just put an amendment in a constitutional carry bill that says, yeah, you can have constitutional carry, but you have to register your firearm with the state. Unless you have a concealed carry permit, in which case you don't have to register. If that is truly the intent, and the person who put this in is the person who initiated this bill. 
Why would you do that? Something doesn't feel right on this. Like I said, I'm not in Nebraska. I'm not part of the legislature. I have not spoken to anyone in there. It's possible that this amendment fails and LB773 keeps on going and keeps on trucking. It's also possible that this amendment gets adopted or the entire bill fails because of this amendment, which would make it a poison pill. Again, introduced by the very person who introduced the topic of constitutional carry and we've been fighting for in Nebraska this whole time, this year. Something feels very weird about this, and that's kind of where we're at. So Nebraska, you're not going to be constitutional carry, the one that puts us over the 50 percentile. I'm a little concerned with that amendment. I don't know what's going to happen. And like I said, stay tuned so I can give you updates as this goes forward, because they've only got eight days left. We're going to know by April 20th on the calendar year. And that's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments field below, and I will see you tomorrow morning on the bullet points. I'm Braden. See you later.